Hey guys, welcome to Edison Medicine. Today we are here with another tutorial video on toxicology, presenting the segment of plant irritant poisons, the first being Ricinus communis. I guess you must have seen this plant somewhere around in your surrounding. This is what a Ricinus communis plant looks like. It is a large shrub with greenish red leaves and belongs to family Euphorbiaceae. The plant looks attractive, right? But it is not in reality because the entire plant of ricinus is poisonous, especially the seeds. However, the oil that is extracted from the seeds isn't poisonous. How? We shall find it later on. Zoom in. This is what a capsule of ricinus communis looks like. Soft spine brownish capsules, each of which contains three seeds. This is what a seed of ricinus communis looks like. The seeds are OMG, oval, mottled in appearance, glossy brown in color. Quite attractive, right? So, are the seeds poisonous every time? No, not every time. The seeds which are unbroken with their coating intact are non-poisonous, whereas if they are broken or crushed and if ingested are poisonous. Did you know that? Ricinus communis is also commonly known as castor plant. The seeds of Ricinus communis are rich in purgative oil and the oil when derived from the seeds is termed as castor oil. The press cake that is left behind when the oil is extracted is poisonous, but the oil itself is non-poisonous. Now let's see what makes the seeds of ricinus communis poisonous. It's ricin, a toxalbumin or water-soluble glycoprotein that has agglutination properties and is also antigenic in nature. The fact that seeds and press cake contain ricin, whereas the oil contains ricinolic acid, explains why the seeds and press cake are poisonous, whereas the oil itself extracted from those seeds are non-poisonous. So the question is, is toxalbumin found elsewhere? Yes, it is. Found in the toxins of cholera, tetanus, diphtheria, and botulinum. And guess what? Its toxic properties are similar to that of viper and snake venom. God, dangerous. So... How does this ricin work? Ricin inhibits RNA polymerase, thereby inhibiting the protein synthesis in cells. Not only this, ricin has a special kind of protein that allows it to gain access to endoplasmic reticulum of gastrointestinal tract by binding to which it causes severe diarrhea. So, talking about fatal dose and fatal period. Fatal dose is the dose which can injure or cause harm to a person and is 5 to 10 seeds for ricinus communis. And fatal period is the duration in which an average healthy individual can be killed on average fatal dose of poison, provided that there is no availability of medical aid during that period and it's about 2 to 5 days for ricinus communis. So, what are the signs and symptoms of ricinus poisoning? It is to be noted that every kind of irritant poison would present with burning pain in mouth, throat and abdomen that is presenting the tract through which it is ingested and passed. The other signs include nausea, severe vomiting and diarrhea, hypotension and shock. And the late features of ricinus poisoning include seizures, intravascular hemolysis and uremia as well. So, what if a person dies of ricinus poisoning? What would be the postmortem appearance? The mucus of GI would be congested, softened and inflamed with erosions and submucosal hemorrhages. And similarly, there may be fragments of seed seen in stomach and intestine. Also, there would be dilatation of heart, hemorrhages of pleura, edema of liver, kidney, spleen and lung as well as hemorrhages in other internal organs. So, medical legal importance is essence of learning toxicology. What's that in case of ricinus poisoning? As I said earlier, the seeds are quite attractive in case of ricinus and that makes children prone to accidental poisoning. However, homicidal or suicidal poisoning are rare and also the powder from seeds on coming in contact with the eyes can lead to conjunctivitis. Did you know that leaves of ricinus were earlier used by Baidis to treat rheumatic pain? and paste of leaves were applied over breast to increase male secretion. Oh, that's gross. So here we are at the end of our tutorial. We hope we could help you a bit. Since most of students are not much into toxicology, we thought we should give it a try. If you have any queries, drop them in comment section below. Please like, share and subscribe. Keep loving, keep supporting. See you soon with another tutorial. Thank you guys.